The committee has chosen, as it has done previously, to reject the ordinance unanimously. Now that I have seen the lack of sincerity, the lack of good faith, it is my firm intention to submit this ordinance for reconsideration as soon as the rules of this council will allow, and then to resubmit it until you, gentlemen, acknowledge the existence of discrimination and face squarely the need for legislative action by this honorable body. The first African-American woman to graduate from UW-Madison Law School, the first African-American woman on the Milwaukee Common Council, the first African-American woman to become Secretary of State in Wisconsin, and the first African-American woman to become a judge. The First Lady of Wisconsin, Val Phillips, led a series of firsts in her career impacting thousands by working to pass the Fair Housing Act in Wisconsin and eventually passing it in 1968 after almost a decade of fighting. Due to Val Phillips' willingness to take a stand and fight for civil rights including fair housing, she broke down racial barriers across the country. After receiving her undergraduate degree from Howard University, Val, a native of Milwaukee, moved home to Wisconsin to attend UW-Madison Law School. While back in Wisconsin, she met her husband, Dale Phillips, and continued law school with her soon-to-be husband by her side. Even from the beginning, Val was taking a stand for African Americans by breaking new boundaries in academics. She was the first African American woman to graduate from UW-Madison Law School. From there, she and her husband moved into Badger Village Housing. Badger Village was a dormitory-style housing complex for graduated couples to live after or during college. Even though Badger Village wasn't physically segregated, strong racial barriers stood in place. I found them talking once, and one said to the other, she always uses that toilet, so don't go in there. Fell suffered through harsh stares and glances as the rest of the white residents signed a petition to have the Phillips family forbidden from the housing complex. Driven by the appalling treatment that she experienced from her own peers, Fell discovered a new passion that would lead her down a crucial path. She knew something needed to be done, and soon. Nelson, I just didn't see why uh, I should not be able to live anywhere in the city that I could afford to live. After living in Badger Village, Dale and Val returned to Milwaukee to open their law office called Phillips and Phillips. Not only did Val manage her law office, but she also played a role in her community by joining the League of Women Voters. The League of Women Voters attempted to register women to vote throughout Milwaukee. At the time, Milwaukee was divided by race. The African-American community lived on the north side, also known as the inner core of Milwaukee, while the white community lived on the south side. As Phillips traveled to the inner core, she discovered a less than adequate living environment. Because landlords wouldn't sell to African-Americans, families were willing to stay in anything they could afford, even if it was a burden to their family. Roofs were falling in, stoves were flaming with no protection of the kids, but it was a place to stay. While the minority dealt with leaky ceilings and frigid nights, the southern community lived up to par in suburban neighborhoods where they could live comfortably in their heated houses. This was one of the biggest breaking points for Val. Nothing would be done to fix this cutting issue unless someone like her took a stand against it. This realization led Val to joining the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, or the NAACP, in order to fight for the rights of African Americans in Milwaukee. The NAACP protested against all discrimination veered towards African Americans. Then, in 1956, a new voting district named the Sixth Ward was created in order to account for the rising population of African Americans. With a new ward being added, there would have to be a new alderman to represent the district. Because this district was in the African American community, this alderman could be black. After long consideration of her family, reputation, and her job, Val decided to run for Alderman of the Sixth Ward in the coming election. In order to win the election, Val and her campaign group decided that her race and gender would be kept secret. This means that in any posters, business cards, and flyers, there would be no picture, only her name, Val Phillips. That strategy worked. Val was elected to serve the Sixth Ward. Despite the election for the Milwaukee Common Council as the first woman and the first African American, it was clear that her colleagues wanted nothing to do with her. 
Since all of the other members on the Milwaukee Common Council were white men, nobody was willing to share an office space with her. I am most impressed by the fact that she went to work every day in a hostile work environment. Um, back then, I had no idea what that would have been like. Um, you know, it's one thing to have 50 of your best friends join you on the picket line. Yeah. It's another thing to go by yourself to a job where everybody wishes you weren't there. Day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, to ignore not just the requests of the black community, but of the entire Milwaukee community. Belle Phillips didn't let the Common Council stand in her way from introducing new laws and fighting for what she believed in. In 1962, Belle first introduced the Fair Housing Law to the Common Council. The Fair Housing Law was a law intended to prohibit landlords from turning down African Americans from renting. This would allow people of color to live in whichever neighborhood their family could afford and not be shut down by discrimination against their skin color. When the law was introduced, it was voted down 18 to 1, having only Val supporting the act. This didn't stop Val from continuing to take a stand for fair housing. She introduced the act several more times throughout her career. Val Phillips was not only up against the other common council members, but also the citizens of Milwaukee community. Letters upon letters of hate mail were sent to her office each month, complaining about Val and other African Americans of Milwaukee. Comments such as, keep them out of the south side, we don't want them down here murdering, raping, assaulting, etc. Some in opposition even threw rocks through Val's windows at home, prompting her to send her children to live in California with their grandparents. Despite the very real and present dangers Val faced in her fight for fair housing, she decided the risk was worth the potential reward of breaking down racial barriers within Wisconsin. While Val Phillips fought for the fair housing law in her place of work, she wasn't the only one fighting in her district or Milwaukee. Father James Grappi, a priest assigned to work at a parish in the Inner Core, had also been noticing complaints about the lack of white landlords allowing rent to African-American applicants. He quickly became greatly involved in civil rights within Milwaukee, joining the NAACP. Together, both Val Phillips and James Grappi decided to take action. In 1967, Val Phillips and Father James Grappi led a group across the 16th Viaduct into white neighborhoods. As the marchers steadily crossed the bridge, white protesters waited impatiently with raw eggs and crude white supremacy signs. No matter the amount of feces, raw eggs, and crude language that were thrown at Val Phillips and her marchers, they continued to peacefully march for 200 more days. I remember running with a poster board that went over my head to keep from being hit by bottles and rocks. Um, and as we neared 16th and National, we were running. On April 4th, 1968, Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. It was time, time to bring the whole country together to end all violence against those who were fighting for their rights. April, 1968, the Fair Housing Act was passed nationally bearing anyone from discriminating potential renters based on their race, gender, national origin, or religion. That same year, the Fair Housing Act was finally passed in Wisconsin. Val Phillips' fight had made a difference. Now in 2017, mandated signs of segregation have been gone for almost 50 years, but segregation is still prevalent. According to National Public Radio, or NPR, Milwaukee is still one of the most segregated cities in the country. On the 16th viaduct, the same one Grappi and Phillips walked on 50 years ago is joked sometimes as the longest structure in the world connecting Africa to Europe. When Phillips worked for passing the fair housing law, African Americans lived on the north side and the white community lived on the south, which still holds true today. Even though the Fair Housing Act didn't completely impact where people end up living, Val Phillips still took a stand by working to pass the Fair Housing Act and taking risks in politics. By working to pass the Fair Housing Act, Phillips broke barriers in politics which allowed both women and African Americans to stride towards new limits, leaving a legacy that will be remembered henceforth. The first African American woman to graduate from UW Madison Law School, the first African American woman on the Milwaukee Common Council, the first African American woman to become Secretary of State in Wisconsin, and the first African American woman to become a judge, the first Lady of Wisconsin, Val Phillips. <laughs>